What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you'd like to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. For the troops sent here on day one of the labyrinth invasion, the first 24 hours against these swarms were a sobering experience but not a truly fearsome one. Building their base in a passageway they gained control of, they immediately stepped up to take countermeasures. These insects, dozens of times larger than regular ones, were not only terrifying sights, they packed a punch too. Let your guard down, and you'd be eaten alive in a matter of seconds, keep your cool, though, and you'd realize that each individual one wasn't that strong. Plus, if these swarms never stopped attacking, that meant the potential for magic crystal harvesting was enormous. It was all prime quality, too, lighting up the faces of every soldier. This is no big deal, they thought. A regular adventuring party would have no way to take a break down here. Their fatigue would build up, and sooner or later they'd stop giving 100%. But these soldiers didn't have to worry about that. If a skilled army wanted to conquer these floors, a bunch of bugs wasn't going to stop it. Even if you counted each individual insect, the empire still outnumbered them. They could also work in shifts during battle, always keeping themselves in perfect battle shape. So the force gradually expanded its network of bases, smoothly proceeding along. They were given no time to relax, but in a way, that was the only real issue. The rewards they reaped, on the other hand, were massive. This insect paradise was lined with all kinds of hidden rooms, caves hidden in trees, dark caverns, and so on. They often housed powerful monsters, but they also had treasure chests, and their contents kept the soldiers constantly smiling with glee. One of them had just found a dagger inside the last room's chests, a pricey-looking number done up with gold and silver. It was a capable blade, too, its sheen belying its magisteel make. Weapons with magisteel cores were expensive enough, but the blade's pure magisteel, well, that'd make any rank and file soldier beam. During the briefings, these soldiers were told that any magic crystals and other items recovered were the property of the military. However, smaller items like this dagger would very likely be overlooked. All their gear would be inspected later, but considering the soldier carrying this blade had to defeat the boss guarding it, it was very likely he'd get to keep it. His comrades eyed him enviously, but at the same time, they were all expecting it to be their turn next. If it wasn't for the chance at little side benefits like this, none of them would keep standing here, swatting giant flies the whole day. By this time, they were also collecting quite a lot of magic crystals. Crystals of this purity were usually scarce finds, but the monsters here dropped them like they were going out of style. The soldiers were laughing all the way to the bank, as it were, and at this rate, they were likely to rake in the bonuses. From what they heard over the grapevine, it was pretty much the same deal up and down the floors. The section crawling with undead was a real disaster, though, you couldn't plunder anything from those guys, but they were a notch harder to kill. Meanwhile, the return on investment these bugs offered was second to none. The treasure they uncovered was more than satisfactory, at least, and everyone there was under the happy delusion that they'd be rolling in dough once they were back. Things started going awry on day two. One soldier realized that when, before his wide open eyes, the head of his buddy walking next to them was suddenly rolling by itself along the ground. Yeah, so when we get back, we're gonna have a wild night at- His buddy's head had what could only be described as a puzzled expression as his glassy eyes looked up at the headless corpse still standing above. His soundless voice stopped midway, his mouth still open as blood spurted out like a fountain, raining all over his comrades. Whoa! The soldier screamed. The sudden catastrophe that befell the person he had just been talking to was too much to comprehend at first. But even that soldier was lucky, because he was chosen as the next victim before his brain could comprehend anything else. His head fell with a thud, and like the mute corpse he was next to, the man quickly expired. They died on floor 79, a place full of flowers in dazzling bloom. One had thought of it as a safe zone until now. It was worth waiting a day for this. All this praise come right to my doorstep. Thank you so much for coming. Now it's time to let us kill and feed off you. The voice was clear as day, an attractive one, booming across the entire floor. It spoke the words of a queen, for it belonged to Apito, the insect queen and boss of this floor. Her beautiful voice was converted into thought waves that reached every corner of the area, and to her faithful servants, they had the timbre of an order. Apito led a swarm of army wasps, a group of murderous insects nearly a foot long whose super senses could catch their human prey no matter how well they hid. Their small, transparent wings functioned as fearsome, high-frequency rotor blades, letting them easily perform irregular high-speed maneuvers. They were the silent killers of the insect world, sneaking up on you at the speed of sound. Excellent dynamic vision wouldn't mean anything against army wasps. 
Without exceeding the intrinsic limits of the human body, it'd be impossible to so much as detect them. The extra skill combination of hasten thought and ultra speed reaction were the bare minimum requirements to keep track of their movements. Just one wasp was classified as an over a disaster. Incidentally, in the Western nations, the sighting of even one army wasp caused the authorities to issue a state of emergency. It'd be immediately reported to the top echelons of each nation's military, who would then form a posse of senior level knights, including the crusaders, if possible. It would become a large-scale cleanup operation, featuring knights cornering wasps with holy barriers and weighing them down with weakening and slowing magic spells before doing them in. Even with that strategy, at least some casualties were always a given, that's how fearsome a monster they were. If more than one was uncovered, meanwhile, that dramatically increased the danger even more. So how many were under the insect queen's control? The number of army wasps carrying out Apito's orders easily exceeded 1,000. And so before long, the wholesale slaughter began. Anyone who might have thought yeah, I can take him was doomed. Even if they were A-ranked powerhouses, unless they had achieved a certain level in their fighting skill, they were little removed from a rank amateur. If you couldn't react to an army wasp's speed, all that awaited was certain death. And so it took less than 10 minutes before all the imperial soldiers gathered on this floor were killed. Labyrinth floors 81 to 90. Let's be frank about it. Day one was just a little warm-up. All the surviving soldiers thought so. Their comrades were gone, all killed by monsters that had the strength of demons or ancient gods. But they weren't the only ones ruining their fates. The same tragedy was playing out on other floors. Everyone was now locked in a desperate battle, forced to fight powerful enemies at every single floor, with no chance of victory. Floor 81 was a paradise for magical beasts, strutting around with their powerful bodies and forming great herds. But these were still dumb brutes, and an imperial soldier could defeat one of them with ease. On average, the strength of each individual ranked A B or higher probably, and they usually appeared in groups of 3 to 5. That had the potential to surprise an unprepared soldier, but not enough to get anyone killed. So they found the stairs before long, quickly meeting up with a thousand strong force thrown into floor 82. Not a bad day's work overall, they felt. It might take some time, but with a few days to work with, they ought to have this whole thing conquered before long. Then day two came, and the arrival of a certain new adversary changed everything. On floor 82, a dense jungle from end to end, was a sentient ape who spoke the human's language. It was called simply the white monkey, and it controlled both the wind and the sound, calling forth mighty storms as it flew across the sky. Its beautiful white pelt shone attractively across its supple physique, and the way it ran unfettered across every inch of the battlefield was so fetching that it almost created the illusion of watching a rehearsed performance. Its unique form of combat, using a mix of martial arts and a club in its hand, was paired with a seemingly never-ending array of aerial killing techniques. Add to that the vorpal blades it shot in all directions, and the white monkey was one of the most dangerous magical beasts in existence. In very little time, the white monkey had used its sorcery to bring the imperial army to the brink of destruction. Then, after an hour of this rampage, it left like the wind, shouting, I'll be back, as it did. The regular raids from this simian menace would begin two days later. One after another, soldiers and their comrades fell. They had fought with every bit of the pride they held as imperial subjects, but they had all been defeated. The sniper team shots were blocked by the monkey's storms. Spells that affected its strength or status were blocked by its sorcery. Spell gun driven magic wasn't strong enough to overcome its wind barrier. That only left close quarters combat, and even the best the restructured armor corps had to offer were just being led around by the nose. They were being tossed about by the white monkey like children, and then, whenever time was up, it would simply leave. The reason? Simple. It was waiting for more imperial soldiers to show up. At first, they ferociously resented being toyed with like this. Now they just wanted this ape to go away. Now there were less than a thousand survivors, and one soldier among them wondered how much longer he had to live. He just couldn't understand how it came to this, no matter how much he thought about it. Then he spotted a white figure. When did the gears start to go out of sync? Before he could find the answer, a dark curtain fell over his vision. Floor 83 featured an expansive grassland with good visibility from end to end. There were pitfalls and other bush league traps set up, but they posed no obstacle at all. The weather was fine, the faces on the marching forces bright. But on the night of day two, the empire suffered staggering damage. The moon had just shifted from waxing to full, and now it framed a lofty, high-minded rabbit in the air. This was the moon rabbit, the master of gravity, and its attacks made no distinction between friend or foe, 
but here it didn't need to worry about the former. Although its powers depended on the moon phase, the rabbit was capable of turning heaven and earth upside down even during a new moon. Now the Imperial Army was at the mercy of this crushing supergravitational force. But it wasn't over. Night would come again, soon enough, and in three days, a full moon, the night when the rabbit's power was strongest. Floor 84 was an intricate maze of cobblestone alleyways. The soldiers walking them seemed pale. Water. I need water. No dice. I can't reach our supply team. You'll have to hold out. Shit. It's only been three days, but I'm so damn thirsty. I can't eat without any water. This surgically enhanced soldier was crying about his uncontrollable thirst. It was a hard scene to believe, but it wasn't his fault. Because the Empire was confident in its ability to create drinking water with magic, they had supplied each soldier with only enough to fill their canteen. A portable food supply, the higher-ups felt, was much more of a priority. Now it was this army's downfall. The air on this floor was filled with some kind of toxin, and there wasn't enough evaporated water in the air to magically collect. This situation was only discovered on day three, when some soldiers began to fall ill. Plus, in a particularly nasty turn of events, antidote magic didn't work on this poison. No matter how many times they tried to undo the toxin's effect, it just kept leaking into their water supply. They could breathe normally, at least. But before much longer, they were going to face some serious attrition. Even now they were having frontline soldiers collapsing from the pain, exhibiting high fevers and black spots on their skin. We got another one. He's lost too much strength. He needs treatment. Damn it. We've got no medics in here. Any healing magic? It's not having any effect. And so more and more of their comrades fell, and every Imperial soldier who was there to see it wondered if they would be next. Now tiny monsters were running around at their feet in the midst of all this. They were black-furred mice, not even two inches long, and they seemed so trivial that the soldiers paid them no mind. That was a serious mistake, for the mice were the very source of all this. In fact, they were the minions of the Black Mouse, the floor boss, the plague monarch spreading a dark, foul illness. The soldiers had made a terrible mistake. So distracted were they by the powerful magical beasts trotting around that they totally ignored a little Black Mouse they could have crushed with one step. These servants of the Black Mouse were thus free to spread their germs with abandon. If someone with Shinji's restorative skills was here, maybe they could have disabled the trap placed on this floor, but sadly, no such handy doctor was present. Magical healing tended not to work very much on illness, it was meant more for physical injury, although certain other spells were better honed to deal with particular diseases. That's it for this video guys, thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. A big thanks to the Anime Kohai patrons who made this video possible. Sanketh Chalu, Minotaur, Chad Vota, I Like Anime, Ray Perez, Chris Guzman, Speed Saber, James Waters, Arigit Das, Quilly Buckner, Curtis Loban, Darius King, Judah Herrera, Just a Guy, Jason Martin, Michelle W. Hernandez, Benjamin Villar, Funky Junkie 22, Donald Williams, Moab A, Day of Light, John M, John Charles, Godman Gaming, Akon Angok, Markithian Tidwell, Andre L. Hamilton, Adrian, Sean Sinclair, Kumo, T. Bush, Chang, John L., James, Tojam, Edgar Fuentes, JV, Dirty Old Hobo, Gonzi Direco, Thomas, Edmund, J., Chris, Juan Ignacio, Joshua Cousins, Jose Hernandez, Vethelny, Lunel Scarlett, Khaled, Jan Wong, Mika Pekarinen, Christian Deshazer, Cal Robs, Divine C. Harris, Destiny Smith, Panda Cats, Aaron Alarcon, Monty Boy 98, D-Man, Divine, Ruben, Luis Caro, Pedro Robles, Jordan, Kamal Ebanks, Chris Duncan Jr., Isaac, Shadow Wolf 660, Koala King 93, Devon, R. N. Bart, Little95, Coyote de Peza, This Is Not My Username, Mizzle Bizzle, Zephyrus, Alver, Normal Defeat, Joshua Andrade, Jaya Keshav, Gary Miles, Dragon Spawn 666, Adrian, Marvin Emmerich, Alex Gomez, J. Rule, Nate, Big Q, Sayonori, Alfredo Interior, Lil Tear, Liron Sankap, Eric Tass, Trivial Swan, Christopher Mash, Edward Garcia, BFGR, Ilex Y, 
Bai, Rory M. Brassel, Querty Stan, Serena Nduri, JDZ2040, Foolish Prophets, Ethan Madison, Louis Strutter, Charles Bailey, Sky T, Diego Ginoza, Mathis Dungle, Nick H, Andre Hamilton, Jason Torres, Sesh, Lon Specialist 8, Zahakob Aid, Sam, Giovanni Abar, Sergio Aguilar. Thank you so much for helping out. I'll see you guys in the next video.